Joe had just been revealed from the day before I see it. I lost the switch. There's no lie on it, but you guys went through the bus now. We're going to get the bus now. We're now fighting that. Lights behind and then we're taking them. Yeah, we're watching all that. So the stops just have to come out. But what we're getting told is almost like a way of uh, not revealing what's going on. Yeah. So Black Ops still continues. Now it's still very much a case of business as usual. And the only reason why the government spent 30 million pounds to try to stop collusion or the torture, etc., to come out is because it goes right to the top. Yes, yeah, exactly. It implicates the likes of Donald Maxfield, it implicates the likes of Tony Blair, the Lord of and the rest of them. We knew exactly what was going on because they gave the orders, they wrote the policies, which meant that when they said 9 11 happens, we stand shoulder to shoulder with you, and we're on the same side. What it actually meant was like all the, all the stuff that people who were right from this country all of a sudden disappeared before we came on the terrorists. I know that it does say we should get and it was just to say that, I mean, our group does deal with uh, a bit of false light here. I think it's bad, though I distract that from the floor in a manner, because I like the way they're going about it, because it is something from the actual one. I'm sure the people who fight this, fight war criminals like Tony Boyer. Um, but what do you think of the stance that Tony Boyer had on us? Why do we still let this happen in this country? Why can we not get these people at the top level to get these points across? I think we have seen many people who are demoralising the country. There's over 2 million people that marched in London in 2003. There's 150 thousand people that marched in this country. There was the world's biggest you know, global demonstrations that took place yet and still winning over the top of the taxes. But I think we'll many years later, we'll actually find out that actually what we did, but we managed to stop the British government from the United States government. We should always remember. Bush and Blair talk about the axis of evil because yeah. what was next after Iraq was supposedly Iran and Syria yeah. who were willing, would have wanted to use the nuclear weapons and yeah. we could have done that actually stopped them in their tracks doing it so yet we might not have succeeded but the fact is it's all starting to unravel right now and the only reason why it's unraveling is because public pressure and pressure has been part of the fact that they'll have to solution and to normalize what we said in this meeting tonight is that the likes of Omar against Mwazin Beg, Binyan Maha who have been tortured Manners that we can't even imagine. We like to talk about the Spanish Inquisition, but the man who was dealt with in exactly the same way by people who are supposed to reparise the civilised standards. And they can come out of a prison where they had their whole lives ripped away to try to destroy the human spirit. And they can still come out, still fighting, and demanding to know what happened to their, their, their fellow prisoners and demanding that justice is given. If they, if they can do that, I think all these people are being asked to do too much. And I think people, yeah. it's the human spirit at the end, that's what terrifies them. People will, it's automatic. You know, people like to, some people like to teach the fact that human beings are selfish. But I think human beings are selfish. So Charles Bond is open, you know, it's kind, it's caring, whatever. I don't think human beings are selfish. That's what they like to propagate. I think ordinary people, ordinary people are horrified when they find out what's going on. And want to find it. And they want to find, they want to get the word justice. And that's why I said, it's not the court that will address justice. It's all the yeah. people up there. The thing that we, some of the people who told me, John Harris, there's a thing called Hudson Illusion. It's called, I've never watched it. It's called Common Law, how we can take back the Because under Common Law, it's only about if you cause harm to our person or any other human being or any other thing. That's where those people come from. Stanley's trench was an axe, no matter what you did and that's the thing that we're getting away from as a human being and it's each other, you know. I'd like to see more action, people actually taking against our bodies. I mean, we're talking about the system, so sometimes it's different about when you stand up and fight against the system, and you also have to have a situation, but I think we don't have a choice. The way you sort of involve the lawyers is when there's a campaign, and how the court moves out, so people are not left to stand on their own with the families. It's in small rooms like this. I mean, when you talk about the anti Vietnam movement, it wasn't always the case that there were millions of people around the planet marching. It started off in small colleges and universities, you know, a handful of people who were, you know, ridiculed. And it grew and it grew and it grew and it brought the world's biggest superpower to its knees. I don't think it's quite possible that we can still bring the world's biggest superpower to its knees because it will eventually build and build and build an education and all these education. Our group's quite small. Yeah, okay. I'll let you go. But uh, our group is we are changing Glasgow, and we're going to have on the eleventh on April. We're going to have a type theme, one for Omar and his honour, and we'll try to get like a foreign use of it. Cheers, Barry. Thank you. Success. I think the audio is going to be a bit.
Yeah. From this? Yeah. Subtitle it if we need yeah. to. Okay. Cool. Well, that was where James Glasgow at the Adelaide building in Bath Street. And we just um, sat and watched the documentary. What's it called? Outside the law, yeah. stories from Guantanamo, and that was um, Amir Anwar. Amir Anwar speaking on behalf of Omar.